Teutona Part 2. How are you? I am freezing. It is cold and the sun is out. It's ridiculously sunny, so the sun's in my eyes and the cold chill is in my bones. It is frigid. I just rolled past Frank and Shirley's and they are closed. <laughs> Today's Sunday as I'm recording this. I was looking forward to that cup of joe. I got no go-go juice in me, so I don't know how this is going to run, but... I don't know, maybe I'll stop up here at Dunkin's or another joint, get me a cup of coffee. Anywho, talking about uh, the Tudor 79180 Big Block that came in. Did the unboxing and repair work on Tuesday. That was a good bit of fun. I was... I got a great deal on this watch. Uh for mostly, well, two reasons. First of all, eBay was running that 10% $500 discount coupon that they do. And the crystal on this one was hilariously chowdered. It was all scratched up, so no one was buying it. So over, this watch has been on the market for months, and no one's buying it, no one's buying it, no one's buying it, can't blame them. It is all jacked up looking. But if you do your research, you'll know that this crystal is plexi. <laughs> I must have spent half a tube of poly watch on it and a ton of elbow grease. But got all the scratches out. I got it to about 98%. There's like one that's in there. You can only see it from an angle, but it looks great. Plus, G, G Money and I both picked up, well, he picked up a pair of replacement plexi crystals for us. Funny thing is, the seller of the crystals I bought from before, and I had to do a return because one of his parts didn't fit. It was like a $25 aftermarket click spring for the Omega, and it didn't seat into the channel, and I had, I had to do a return. I guess he was a little off-put by that, so he blocked me. So interesting thing on eBay, if a seller doesn't, <laughs> doesn't like you, he or she can block you, but if you got a network of friends, Send G Money the link. Yo, can you uh, pick me up on this? So he bought one for himself too. So we have the backup. So I have it, uh, but I'm not. I don't need to use it now. Solved it. And that end link strap gap, well bracelet gap thing. I was worried about that when I came in, uh, figuring I was going to have to buy replacement end links or whatever. But if you have some tools and you're uh, stable, and a little bit of know-how and some friends, help you figure stuff out. Sorted. I want to talk about this watch. This is a very, very important watch for right now. It's called the Teutona. G named it as such. It's a wonderful alternative to the Rolex Daytona for two reasons. One, availability. That's the key. Two, it has some of the same heritage. doesn't have the same movement. It's got some of the same look and flair. Granted, the orientation of the subdials is different because of the fitty inside. That Valjoux 7750. And obviously, yes, price. It's probably a fourth of the price. And it even has some Rolex parts on it, which is comical. These are from the mid-90s, early 90s, mid-90s. This particular model, the five-digit reference. And as you'll see in the upcoming uh, pictures and so forth, that if it says Tudor Oyster Date or Tudor Prince Date, that's the model range from the 90s and newer. But if it just says Tudor, then it's an older model. And those models, going back into the early 80s, 70s, those are going for like 15 and up. So there's always a chance a seller could have one of those listed. That's actually one of the four digit references and not five. And you know, maybe if you find one and they're listing it at five price, you get it, who knows? I don't know. Uh, but they, they look awfully similar. But I think the there's the big block and then there's like a smaller block. I think the older ones wear closer to how a Daytona wears, which is smallish, or not, not small, but on the smaller side compared to the juggernauts that are out there, right? And there are a ton of variants on this. We've got about three, it's basically black dial, white dial, silver dial, silver dial and alternating colors of the subdials, get what you like. And then the, the bezels are variable too. There's a there's the steel insert, which is what this is. There's the black steel insert. And then they even have one with a rotating bezel, which was a compelling 
It's a compelling model to consider. Basically, has a second time zone functionality to the watch. Poor man's GMT, as they say. Great watches, great options, and great hunting. You can still get these. They're still approachable right now, but they're going up and up and up. I ended up paying less for mine than G Money did over a year ago, and that's because navigating and and so forth. So, and then there's the Prince Date line that came after this, which can be very approachable, around 5K, especially when you consider the new Tudor chronographs. Constrained availability, and in the gray market, they're selling over list. Not acceptable. But we'll get into that in a moment in the deck. And this is a watch worthy of another video. It's it's a great piece. I, In truth, I had no idea I was going to love it as much. I mostly bought it as an investment potential because that's what motivated G Money to get his in the first place. He, he liked it, didn't want to go for the Daytona. And it's, it's an amazing watch. <laughs> and according to that last video uh, we did about it, he says he was, you know, hunting these when they were under four. And I, I told him not to get it. Shame on me if that's true. I don't remember it. I'm not saying it's not true. It could be true. But I could also picture me saying, oh, if you want a Daytona, hold on and get the Daytona. But that was several years ago and they, those were still unapproachable back then so I don't know but it'd be embarrassing if that was true that I said to pass on this because if we could have got in on these in the mid threes what a score that would have been we'd have doubled and almost tripled up our, our money on a flip not that that's what it's all about but it's nice it's nice to get in on a watch and see it improve I love doing it it's my favorite thing let's uh, take a closer look and all the wonderful Tutonas that are out there. Tuda, the house of Tuda. Talking about Tudor chronographs today. Here is the current lineup. I heard on uh, one of the other channels, I think it was Ushin, talking about these Black Bay Chronos. I guess these are hard to get now, and they're selling for over list. And we're not having that. And gosh, we're gonna look at some other Tudor chronograph options. We will not be talking about these chronos today, even though we've got much love for the Heritage Chrono Blue. Uh, the Heritage Chronos can still be had under list in the used space. Today we're talking about some older ones, looking at the, the mid-90s, namely the Oyster Date series. And we're going to kick it off with the 79160. Uh, the 160, the most notable feature is that all black bezel insert, highly reminiscent of the Speedmaster line. And you'll note that the word Oyster Date appears on the dial under the word Tudor. If you see one that looks like this but does not have Oyster Date and it's just blank, it's possibly one of the older models and probably should be going for 15 grand. Uh, these are somewhere anywhere from six to eight K right now as of today. But if you negotiate hard, you can get them close, if not at six K or under. Next up the 170. And you'll notice again, the major difference is the bezel. This one has a rotating bezel, which is compelling. It basically turns it into a GMT chronograph uh, of sorts with that rotating bezel. I really, really like that. I didn't end up getting one of these, but that one on the left, I really like that. That's that's compelling. I'm pretty sure that's the one I saw on my New York City trip, is that one on the left. And then we have the 79180, the bell of the ball. And it's available in at least one more dial variant, that first one on the left, the all white. And the one in the middle, the one that uh, both G Money and I have, that we love dearly, Sometimes you'll see that with a white dial or a silver dial and it can be hard to tell which is which in the photos So you have to look at it You gotta look at it twice. Who am I kidding? You gotta look at it uh, 14 times to determine what's what and the distinguishing factor here the all-steel bezel. I I just like it. I was I was torn between uh, the panda in the middle and the reverse panda if, if a reverse panda had popped uh, I would have probably got it, 
but eBay was having that, you know, $500, 10% discount coupon thing. And the unit that I spied had problems with the crystal, it was severely jacked. And I blew out the rest of the poly watch, uh, cleaning it up, but got it there, got it at a discount. And I'm in love, absolutely love it. All right, next up, the Prince Date. Prince Date, model numbers 79, 260, 70, 80, ADP, and a bunch of variants. An unusual number of variants in the Prince Date line. You're gonna note that it says Prince Date on the dial, and this unusual one on the right, rawr, this is the Tiger. This is perhaps the most attractive of the Tiger Woods Edition Prince Dates mostly because this is the only variant I've seen where the word tiger is not in red or another color. It just kind of falls into the background. And I don't mind the name tiger on there. G-Money can't stand it. That's why I didn't go for one. But when it's in the background like this, it's, it's better. But if you've got a red tiger, so be it. Rock it. It's awesome. Th these are fabulous watches. And these can, the tigers can be had more affordably than the regular Prince date or those chrono dates. But you know what? You do not want to go hunting for this alone. Get a book. Buy a book. Uh, these are the Mondani book line here. They are not a sponsor, though I wish they would be. Georgia, you are awesome. And I picked up this Tudor Anthology book. I think I got it for, I don't know, 250 300 Okay, yes, that's a lot for a book. But if you're shopping for a watch that is potentially five grand, 10 grand, 15 grand, some tutors are like 25 grand. It's, it's, it's wild and out. This book was awesome. And I am gonna do a quick little insert going through it so you get a sense of why it's so great. But their other books are really wonderful as well. Yes, you will pay a premium for them, but yes, they are worth it. These books are geared towards the collector meaning the person going out and trying to find and source and buy these watches that's why these books are so amazing and I, and I love them the shakedown the oyster date still approachable uh, I didn't put any pricing in this video because this this model is it, there's a lot of fluctuation in the pricing it's all going up it's going up with the, the Rolex trend going up but buy this model now get it now because it is only going higher and these have a bunch of rolex parts on them rolex crown rolex case back and you know tudor isn't going to be making any more models with rolex stamped parts it's still approachable you can get it the prince date model or the prince date line is the most affordable you should be able to negotiate these downwards to 5k do not pay more than 5k wait for the coupon work with a seller and they're fabulous uh they just aren't they don't look exactly the same as the oyster date there's little variances same movement value inside the fitty and and great watches and lastly buy the book get the book it's awesome it will help you hunt and it will help you knock out any bogeys because I have seen some Frankenstein watches out there on the bay that this book helped me avoid. And as always, happy hunting. And here we have the Tudor Anthology Mondani book. Amazing book. Let's have us a quick tour through this book. See what you're getting. The perfect combination of photographs, reference numbers, dial variants, Oh my gosh, this is the perfect book for hunting whichever of the tutors you want. Just look at all those amazing photos and the key reference numbers and original pieces that you can use to discern the fakes, the frauds, the Frankensteins from the real deal, especially when you're looking to go into the vintage space like we did on this video. So it was actually this book that I used to help corroborate the photos I was using. So here we have the 79160 variants, what the box would have looked like, the bracelet even, 
Then going on to the 170. Punch papers. And ultimately, my little baby, the 180 right here. So, in a nutshell, this book is amazing. If you're hunting Tudor, do yourself a favor, buy a book, and that'll get her done. Tutona! Gonna be a thing. 2022, mark my words. The Tudor Tutona. Big block. Oyster date, Prince date, whatever it takes. And whatever you do, if you're gonna go hunt these watches, because there are there are some Frankenstein's out there. I'll I'll put up a picture of one of them. What a nightmare. Uh, get the book. Get the Mondani Tudor Anthology book. It doesn't just have the chronographs, as you saw, it has all Tudor models from back in the day. The Tudor Submariners, I've been looking at those. Thankfully, I got steered away from some really bad examples because of the book. Check out that book. Add it to your watch library. It becomes a resource, becomes a, a valued friend, if you will, as you're chasing down rare references in this beautiful, fun, sunny hobby of ours. All right, have yourself a good one. Peace.